Nigerians are expected to seek out the best. Two words to describe the activity. Do you really need to fall on this Say to you on Be the first to know. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential We break the news. Men in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live. I wish you would. As the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV Primetime News. 24 hour news station. Oh, it's a beautiful Monday here in Lagos. Good morning to you and welcome to Call Digest Live, where we bring you in-depth review and analysis of stories as they break in Nigeria. I am Nifemi Oguntui, and I'm so excited to be back this brand new week. If um, it was true, and if I was still in the spirit of last week, I would have been counting down to February 14. For many young Nigerian guys, they thought it was an escape out of taking their girlfriends, of course, some sharp guys, their wives, out on Valentine's Day. But it looks like um, INEC knows better. So February 14 is free for everyone. <laughs> and for those people who were supposed to get married on February 14, who postponed it to March 28, and I think that you can still bring it back a little bit because um, February 14 is free for everyone. Well, we'll continue this show this morning with a new twist on the election dates in Nigeria. Of course, INEC came out um, on Sunday or Saturday, if I am not mistaken, to give reasons why there is a need for that election to be postponed. But one thing we must make mention is that there were threats that um, there would be an outbreak of violence across Nigeria if the elections were postponed. It looks as if the Nigerian electorate know better and they know that violence isn't the way to go. Well, before the postponement on Saturday, my producer Emmanuel Ajayi was on the streets of Lagos to find out how ready, how prepared and how optimistic Nigerians are as we guess the February 14 election that has now been postponed. Let's find out what the spirit was last Saturday. That's the only chance I have to dictate who rules me. I have the full right to vote and I'm going to count my vote from very that day. But it's, I'm in Nigeria and whatever I'm going to do in Nigeria, I'm supposed to have, I have to participate in it. So that is the main reason why I have to go out and vote. I'm a Dibo, Kosin Koto Tewa Lorun. Kawa Mo Wakolo Silewe to Tewa Lorun. Kosin Koto Marala, Ara Lu Lorun. Eh, Kim Gokon Kota on a bar for us, see Hada Fumo, Pabati Dada. And you talk about Show Tom Benio, Kosho Tau. I will vote for every one of them. Uh, you see that PDP or uh, APC, I uh, will vote. But we want to be, them be honest. We want them to be honest. Everything that they want to do, they're supposed to do it will be honest. So our mind will cool down and then self they will cool down. We respect their elders. We know that they are our elders. But we want them to do the thing that everything, everybody, it will be okay. But I would like to vote. No but ask out to vote. If I want to vote, I'll vote for the right person. We are looking forward for the right person to do rural Nigeria good though. But this one I don't know. We are not going to vote since we do not have uh, but ask out. See me. I'm coming from my leg office. Look at my leg. I lay down. Two rounds to rush in. And you want us to come out to vote for what? Number one, there is no good school in Nigeria, no quick admission. We are all out here jobless and you want us to vote while you guys are giving us jobless. Make way and we will enter the vote country and everybody will vote. But if you don't do things well, we aren't going to vote. That is it. And we don't have a fellow person, Boko Haram from here to here and all those stuff, so we are not going to vote. Also recall that prior to that Saturday, many state governments actually announced one or two public holidays in Lagos. Uh, Friday was declared a public holiday for government workers and of course private employers were also uh, talked to to please let their officers or workers go home early so that they can get set and pick up their PVCs in case they have not picked it. In Lagos, for instance, the markets were also closed, I believe, on Saturday to that effect. INEC is now saying that probably this is what everyone uh, wanted. Many of those Nigerians who have been crying that they've not gotten their PVCs yet, this might just be an opportunity for them to do that six weeks extension in the uh, election dates is an interesting one for Nigerians. On the show today, we'll be finding out what the reactions are from different stakeholders, especially Nigerians who 
indeed were so much ready for the February 14 election. You recall that prior to this time, we had opened the phone lines to get the reactions of people across board. And many of those that called in were saying, well, we are ready, we are set, and no doubt, like never before, we can't wait for the February 14 election. On Sunday, or Saturday to be precise, uh, there was a long meeting, about seven hours meeting between the INEC chairman, resident electoral commissioners and other stakeholders. As we guess, what way to go? You recall that prior to this time, there was a council of state meeting where past ex, uh, uh, heads of state of Nigeria, as well as governors across the 36 states also sat to discuss. Many thought that the idea that INEC had the sole responsibility of deciding whether or not to postpone the elections was a good news. As a matter of fact, the opposition party rolled out the drums and said that indeed the Nigerian democracy has been saved. But on the contrary, that well, probably the most amazing thing for broadcast journalists will be the fact that international media broke this news long time before the INEC chairman made a formal declaration later on Saturday night. How they got hold on that, many can say. But you also recall that the National Security Advisor to Mr. President kick-started this move of postponement in faraway England, where he also proposed precisely a six-week extension of the election date, given reasons, although not because of security reasons, he gave reasons uh, as touching irregularities in the uh, distribution of the permanent voter card. So they didn't have a clue because it said six weeks and indeed INEC came out to pronounce six weeks. Amazingly now, the reason he gave in England wasn't because of security. He talked about the possible disenfranchising of millions of Nigerians. Well, let's quickly find out in Professor Atahiru Jaga's words, the reasons for this extension. If the security of personnel, voters, election observers, and election materials cannot be guaranteed, the life of innocent young men and women, as well as prospects for free, fair, credible, and peaceful elections would be greatly jeopardized. The announcement of shifting the dates of the 2015 general elections by the chairman of the Independent Electoral Commission uh, Tahir Jaga citing security challenges has now reduced political activities in Lagos. <laughs> Addressing residents of Northern Extraction at a rally to drum up support for the APC presidential candidate Muhammad Buhari and state governorship candidate Akim Miambode, Babatunde Fashola call on them to be steadfast in the quest to ensure victory for the party at the polls. We don't be ready for elections on Saturday. Not be so. Fair, credible, and peaceful elections would be greatly jeopardized. Consequently, the Commission has decided to reschedule the 2015 general elections thus. The national elections, i.e. presidential and national assembly, are now to hold on March 28, 2015. While the state elections, governorship and state assembly, are to hold on April 11, 2015. It should be noted that this rescheduling falls within the constitutional framework for the conduct of the elections, notably Section 76, Subsection 2, Section 116, Subsection 2, Section 132, Subsection 2, and Section 178, Subsection 2. See also Section 25 of the Electoral Act 2010 as amended. For the avoidance of doubt, we will under no circumstances as a commission approve an arrangement that is not in line with the provisions of our laws. Our hope is that with this rescheduling, the security services will do their best to ensure 
that the security environment needed for safe and peaceful conduct of the 2015 elections is rapidly put in place. Okay, so elections, um, presidential election, I believe, are now scheduled to hold on March 28, and we're going to have to wait till April 11 to find out exactly what the governorship and state house of assembly elections will be. I'm joined now on telephone by the chief press secretary to INEC chairman, Kayode Idowu. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Call Digest this morning. Thank you. All right, let's start from the big one. Prior to this time, INEC seems to have told Nigerians that they were set to go, good to go, as we gas the election. But there was a U-turn on Saturday, as you are aware, that where your principal came up to announce a postponement in the election. The question on the lips of many, really, is that he also gave an amazing statistics of um, quite pleasing percentage of PVCs that have been collected in the same northeast Nigeria where uh, there are fears of insecurity. How can we juxtapose all of this together? Isn't it an irony that many more people collected PVCs in northeastern Nigeria for the same reasons why we're postponing the elections, Kayode? So, uh, maybe there are two things we need to get clear. Number one is that the elections are not postponed because of PVC distribution, neither was it postponed or neither we had the election postponed because of our next unpreparedness. The commission is fully ready to go. And we have given statistical accounts of the level of our deployments to show that we were ready to go. The election we have postponed for a major reason maybe an advice from the security chiefs that it was not in the interest of the country that we go ahead because they were not in a position to provide security cover. Now, the commission is there, and that this is much in the, in the public domain. Go and read the speech by the chairman. Go and read the speech to the National Council of State. So these things are clear. But going back to the issue of how many people have collected PVC and all that, at the state, for, for the last time I recall, is in the southeast. The collection there is 77.64%. Aqua is in the southeast. The collection there is 79.05%. Even rivers is in the south, south south. The collection there is 74%. So if we are looking at percentages of collection, they spread across. And I don't see, I don't, I don't understand the purpose for isolating certain states. I think it is peculiar to those states. I would have thought the issue should be look at states where the collection rate is low and begin to encourage the people in those states to turn out. Because the procedure for collection is the same across the country. It is not different. What I'm saying exactly is that Professor Atairo Jaga says that there is uh, no doubt a high collection rate in northeast Nigeria, which seems to tell people that even electorates in that region are ready to vote. I'm saying, is it not an irony that people in northeastern Nigeria want to vote and then the security agencies are saying that they are not set for them? About irony. The reality is that the 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 um, necessary security infrastructure for elections to hold across the land uh, was unfortunately not available, and so the, the elections could not go on. It's all right. Uh, Nigerians also would love to know if the distribution of the PVC will go ahead. Uh, during the six weeks of postponement? Yeah, sure, it will. Because uh, the, the commission is hoping, even though as at, as at, as at uh, yesterday, which was the initial deadline, we will have hit 80, uh, 70 percent because I have before me the record for, for Friday, uh, which is 67.64 percent. 
I'm sure by the time we we collect what was done on Friday, Saturday, what was done on Sunday, we are likely to have it the seventy percent back. But nevertheless, the distribution will go on, and uh, the commission is hoping that uh, in a matter of a few weeks from now, it will be clear to Nigerians that whatever card is left in the commission's custody is so because the people to collect them are not available to do so. It, it's all right, but what happens now if um, insurgency uh, has not been able to be curtailed or doesn't subside after the six weeks? Are we looking ahead for another postponement for the same reason? Because insurgency has been around in Nigeria for a while now. You see, the, 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 the attitude should be more positive than that. As far as I think is concerned, INEC is highly positive in this position concerning this matter. There is no reason to doubt or to second guess our, 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 our uh, leaders. There is no reason to second guess the officers, the security chiefs, who said they, uh, they are doing counter so you These are the same, I, I'm not a spokesman for them. And so, but what they told the commission is that counter insurgency operations uh, as they re the redesigned. Now they have more countries on board. Niger, Chad has just joined. I'm aware. I mean, if you recall, that, 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 that it was in the public, uh, it was in the media that an MOU was signed last week, and that based on that, they will concentrate their efforts on and maximizing the MOU that has been signed to deal with the problem of insurgency. And, and uh, they said they will do that in, in six weeks. And the commission hopes and believes that they will live up to that. Okay. Professor Tyrodega also made mention of making a wide consultation prior to this time. He said about 26 out of the 28 political parties were present in the meeting. Can you tell us what the consensus really was among the political parties? traditional lines. Of course, they, 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 they've not hidden their dispositions in the public domain even prior to that meeting. And I can't recall that any of the parties particularly changed their initial position in that regard. But let me also make clear that right from the outset, the commission told them that this decision is it. It is not a question, it is not to say Let's take a vote and bring out the vote. We will now have to play along with the votes or with the majority view or with the minority view. That, that was not the intention. Okay. The intention is to lay before them what the issues are and let them see, based on those issues, why, I mean, how they themselves could make contributions to the thinking and the, and, the, and, the, and the decision that the commission was going to make. And having taken their positions, it was the, 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 the lot of the commission to make a decision. Will it be right to say at this point that INEC wouldn't have any excuse in the area of training and retraining of its ad hoc staff, in the area of getting set as regards the rescheduled March 28 presidential elections? I can, I can tell you that even as we speak, INEC is largely ready. Yes, we've said, you, 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 you said it, I mean, it is not 100%. But honestly, I don't know of any human enterprise that you say you are 100% ready. People write exams like right? today. I don't know of any student who say, I am 100% ready for these exams. You prepare for the exams, to go into the exams. And you believe that you prepared hard enough. That is the position of the commission. So the commission is prepared and ready to conduct the election, even as we speak. You talk about the training of staff. By our program, we will be completing the training of the last set of staff by tomorrow. That, 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 was, that was the thing. I've, I've read in the public uh, some media or the, uh, channels, or well, newspapers in particular, who are attempting some revisionist games that uh, the, the staff have not been trained. That is not true. 
what the commission does is cascade training. Cascade training means you begin with master trainers. We will train trainers. We will now go to train the people uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the shop floor. And the commission has gone through the phase of the master trainers and was just to begin the shop floor training on Friday. That, that, was, that was already planned for. So talking about the issue of training, it's only as if the commission was not, had not trained its staff. I, I, I read in this, in this 40 paper yesterday that the commission had not trained the presiding officer. The training of presiding officers was to start on Friday. And actually started before the suspension. So I mean, I, I don't know if it's no longer going as you speak. I'm sure it will even be ongoing as you speak. So it, it, it's the only advantage that this adds to us now is if you had wanted to have three days of training, now you can have two weeks of training. If you had wanted to have four or five days of training, you can have two weeks of training. That, 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 that adds value to the system and it, it's welcome. It's all right. Can INEC guarantee the safety of um, electoral materials that have already arrived, both sensitive and non-sensitive? Uh, bearing in mind that there were cases of some PVC stolen in some part of the country, especially the ballot papers. Where are they now? The ballot papers are in the central bank's vault. Okay. And what about other materials that um, INEC already got for this election? Don't forget that these materials are deployed to INEX offices at the lower level. Oh, wow. Where they will be taken to the polling unit on election day. It's not that they are out there in the open. It's not that they are in the public schools where elections we hold. They are still in custody of INEX. But they are being deployed to the lower level because they do deployment closer to the polling units before election day so that we can open the polling units at 8 a.m. So those materials are intact. There are, nothing has happened to them. They are in our next company. And you can guarantee that those materials will not be compromised ahead of the March 28th and April 11th rescheduled elections? If they were going to be compromised, they will, be, they will, they will be compromised before the, the, the February 14th schedule. But then, then the commission does not operate like that. How do you compromise ballot boxes anyway? How do you compromise guns and virus? Because those are the kind of things that you have deployed. How do you co compromise cell picks? It's all right. Can you also confirm to us? The ballot papers are in the, 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 the center bank. Those are the ones that you could say they could be exposed. And they are in the, they are in the vault of the center bank. The resources are in the vault of the center bank. Can you also quickly confirm to us the present percentage of PVC collection rate nationwide? The last figure we had was 66%. Has it increased today? As at, as at, as at February 6, which was Friday, we have 67.64%. Okay, 67.64% as at February 7. Yeah, February 6. February 6, Friday. 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 It's all right. Uh, there, there, are, there are also concerns, uh, as we just uh, start to conclude this interview with you, sir, that um, the expectations of Nigerians and indeed the electorate were high before the February 14 election. Are you of the opinion that um, voter apathy will set in and then people will start getting discouraged and that the turnout might not just be as high as it was being speculated uh, before now? Honestly, I hope not. If you if you ask me, my sense is that actually there will be greater determination on the part of Nigerians to, to make sure that they cast their vote. And that will be highly welcome. In any event, more people have the opportunity to collect their cards now. So I, I see this as actually strengthening the uh, desire of Nigerians to come out Thank you very much, Kayode Dawu, Chief Press Secretary to the INEC Chairman, Professor Atayu Jagia. Good to have you join us today on Core Digest. Thank you for having me. And we hope that um, we can call on you at any time to get your opinion Please on the developing issues. Okay. Yeah, 
Thank you for joining us. Well, I just spoke with the Chief Press Secretary of INEC, uh, telling us updates and uh, on the just postponed elections. Of course, if you just came into the country and you've not had it yet, the presidential election is now holding on March 28, and uh, the other elections will be holding on April 11 this year. Let's quickly find out what the reactions are from some stakeholders. Of course, Mr. President already has appealed to all stakeholders to accept the shift in the dates of the general elections as announced by INEC on Saturday. In good faith, he also assured them that despite the change in dates of the election, that he remains committed to the sanctity of May 29, 2015 as the terminal date of his four-year term uh, four year first term. That's exactly how he puts it. And he also says that um, in a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Ruben Abati, Mr. President says that rather than trading blames and making statements that are capable of overheating the polity, uh, stakeholders must show understanding and support the commission he also calls on the international community the civil society uh, and the electorate to continue to support his administration's commitment to free fair and credible elections justify the postponement uh, president goodluck jonathan says that INEC has a responsibility to conduct credible elections in which every Nigerian of voting age is given the opportunity to exercise their civic right without any form of hindrance whatsoever. And of course, there are many, many reactions coming up this morning from different stakeholders, from the PDP, the APC, some senators, as well as some other civil society organization. We'll also be joined on telephone in a short while by other stakeholders in on these developing stories. But let's quickly find out what the PDP is also saying on this particular issue. The PDP, just as the president has held INEC's decision of postponing the election, the party's campaign organization said in a statement issued in Abuja that everything happened in national interest. Although INEC cited security reasons, spokesman for the campaign team, Femi Fani Kayode, said it showed that the commission was not fully prepared. PDP claims that as at February 7, only about 34% of eligible voters had collected uh, their permanent voter cards. Well, that's not tallying at all with what uh, we had Kayode Dowu tell us a few minutes ago who confirmed that 67.64% of the PVCs have been postponed. Well, I'm joined now by the spokesman for the Transformation Ambassador of Nigeria, Dr. Udenta Udenta. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today on Call Digest. Good morning, Doctor. Are you there? You're on to Nifemi Oguntoye from Call Digest, from Call TV News. Okay, let me just inform you that you are on live TV now. So just give us about um, five or ten minutes of your time to discuss with you. All right, thank you very much. Let's quickly have your reaction to the postponement of the elections as announced by INEC. Well, commentators and uh, opinion boards, including some public intellectuals and scholars, are struggling with the term postponement or adjustment in the dates of the election, a shift in the dates. Postponement may well be intended in, uh, in the Constitution and the Electoral Act, but it carries a whole burden, you know, of uh, implications. Postponement beyond May 29, that's what some people are suggesting, which is, not, which is far from it. Adjustment in the time, in the dates of the election, is far more for me in concern with what they can do. We have a 30 day to 150 day time to issue with which to operate. So long as that is not violated, other matters are narratives and semantics. The critical thing is that our democracy is getting deepened by the day, increasingly consolidated with all its complications and difficulties. Democracy, my brother, is not an event. 
or a series of loosely connected events with linear kind of uh, trajectory. It is complicated, it has deep contours here and there. This is one of the contours of our democracy. And we must master the environment, prepare our head, get more people to correct their PVC, give the parties more time to reach as many people as possible, and on, on the March 28th, we the presence of the election on the National Assembly election. On the 11th day, we get done with the state elections. That's my take. It's all right. Uh, uh, there are also insinuations from certain quarters that um, the idea of postponing the election actually came from the National Security Advisor to Mr. President, who suggested a six weeks postponement in faraway England. Now, look at how that figure tallies with the final submission of INEC. And the reason he gave initially wasn't even for the sake of security. He talked I about. Know, um, I, don't, I don't know whether you, you read version, the loaded version of his lecture at Chatham House and the Eastern point, you know, the exchanges between him and the journalist. He never said it since we postponed that. He never even suggested a postponement on his own. Go and look at the document closely and then leave the false narratives of the APC in the media. You know, sometimes with their foreign collaborators, media partners and collaborators. What exactly? The what exactly did he say? The fact of the matter is very simple. Postponement to what end? Postponement that will infringe on May 29, or postponement that is still in tandem with the constitutional provisions in you know, hand of a prime May 29. The moment you settle that issue, the other thing becomes nonsensical, almost irrelevant. All the drum beats of provocation and war being begin every year have nothing to do with the decision that Jeddah took. And don't forget that even though he makes it, we are ready to do this election, there was another subtext in Jeddah's statement, and that's in the shifting dates. If you have 32 million people who have not collected the PVCs, you must prove that the PVCs are ready, distributed equally across the country, in such a way, to such an extent that even the poorest of the poor will have access to it. Once you've done that, then you are okay. If you've not done that, you still need more time to do that because every vote counts. Most of the election people think it's going to be very close or very tight. Every vote counts. Don't wish them away. If you have 20, 25 million people with that PVC, well, let's go and do an election. Well, they just get it done. To see some great ad hoc staff, not even trained. Let's get it done. Training manual, not even published. Let's get it done. Can we just stay stuck in Abuja, not move to the zones, not to the states, not to wherever they should be? Let's get the election done. That for me a song of anarchy, a song of national dissolution. I just spoke with them. Um... I just spoke with the chief, um, INEC chief press secretary, who confirmed to us on tele I mean, on telephone now, that as at February 6, uh, 2015, 67.64 percentage of the PVCs had been distributed. Wouldn't you call that a pass mark? Because as far as INEC was concerned, it was a good pass mark. We're not dealing with Gary here, or dealing with, uh, with uh, Considering that the date for the yeah, this one is not good. Rotten. Take it away. We have many more left. We have 10 bags of rice. One is not good. We have nine left. They are dealing with human beings. And they are participation. They are involvement in the democratic process. Violations. They are dealing with an inclusive democracy, participative democracy. And we are discussing here, debating, whether 20 million people who are going to have a PVC, they count, they matter, haven't we reached enough threshold? We must keep on pressing on until everybody should have a PVC. Does not really want to have a PVC? If you can demonstrate that you've sent out the PDC to every patient, every ward, every location, where people will collect them, you don't public enlightenment, spend money on public enlightenment. If you can collect and collect the PDC, if you've done all that, and people still need to collect the PDC, that is where you can make the kind of argument you're making. Unless that you've done that, we have now more time, six weeks or more, for people to collect the PDC. What is the rest of judgment? It's all right. You have APC now. APC now has more time to penetrate the country for that, to reach their voters, to energize their base, like that PDP. Let me just get so your... Let me get your reaction to this because some of the opinion that the biggest beneficiary of this postponement is the PDP, who as... Why? As... Why? Who as a result of um, opinion polls, had a tight race and probably we have more time to prepare for an election that opinion initially... Poll, opinion poll conducted by who? I'm telling you. Are individuals and organizations with that credibility? This election is Jonathan's to win. He would take the entire South 
east, he will take the south south, he will take seventy percent of the southwest. What me? And tell my friends in the southwest in ABC that Jonathan will take seventy percent of the southwest. That's the history of the southwest. The progressive society, progressive environment, the enlightened. They know what they have to do on election day. Whether we take the north central, great portions of it. I have made you in the north east and northwest. This election was going to be a tight election. Was going to be the president of PDP. I don't know who's giving you that scary mongering kind of narrative. It's all right. Subscribe with intellectual imbalance on the part of the people who are making this kind of calculation. Doctor. What, listen to me. Jonathan is not just a candidate of the PDP. He's an elected sworn in president and commander in chief of the Federal Republic. There's life for this country after elections. You still have to govern. You still have to do what govern the country. You still have to do what you have to do to secure life and property, to ensure that our democracy is deepened and strengthened and consolidated. Don't really seem to a candidate seeking for votes who can make any kind of statement that pleases his ears of his partisan supporters. But some would tell you that some would tell you that Mr. President had um, over three years in his hands to deal with insurgency. And uh, what confidence do we even have that uh, this administration will be able to overcome this challenge within six weeks? Nobody, nobody even told you that within six weeks we overcome insurgency. Americans who are advising on issue of postponement and so are not overcome, not overcome insurgency in Iraq. We have a situation in Afghanistan, even as they're leaving, the place is still boiling. We know what they did in Libya is a failed state. The same thing with Iraq. We know what's going on in Syria. Even with their arms, their men, their resources, their technology, they couldn't overcome all this is in the past 10 or more years. We do not expect the arms of Nigeria to overcome the whole of insurgency in the Northeast in six weeks. But that's what they just said. But what the armed forces are saying now, what? He said, he said that, listen to me, that special operations going on have been motive or by the motive national platform now in place. Chad, Nigeria, Nigeria, Cameroon, etc. The special operations will last for six or seven weeks. Therefore, they will need to move men and materials from across the country in order to do what? Have a great run during the special operations. So the Lagos, especially in Lagos, I expect possibly 1,000, 2,000 men in arms to help the police, you know, to do internal security duties. And it don't have the available. What happens in the first point of the during the election in Lagos? And doctor. <laughs> You don't expect the ordinary and average Nigerian to smell a rat that this operation is kick-starting on February 14, a date scheduled for the election? Let me tell you why a rat cannot be smelled. And that is what people are searching for this rat. The rat does not exist. <laughs> the day twenty nine May 14 initial date that the expectations uh, of Nigerians were high. What is the possibility of voter apathy setting in? Because many are also asking that what happens if we have 100% distribution of PVC, but then the morale is low, rather low, uh, for the electorate? Because the political parties and civil society are not doing their work. Civil society will keep on educating people to exercise their civic responsibility.
candidates everywhere, PDP, PDPs is well distributed, you know, adult staff well trained, you know, and all manners of other technical logistic details that make elections successful. We give the political parties more time to reach out to the supporters, to reach out to more people, to talk to them, to do house to house campaign, you know, door to door, in place, pamphlets, all over the place, which we don't even have time to do when the election to take place on May on the on February fourteenth. So what is all this uh very cool and sometimes very belligerent narrative we're reading the media from APC, for example. But if they know something we don't know. That's all right, doctor. Something the plan to happen to the country on 14th, something that we do not know about. If not, then she do what everything that's fine. Go back to the drawing board, re-strategize, and then we want mobilizing the people like PDP is already doing. Thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Odenta Odenta, spokesperson for Transformation ambassadors of nigeria thank you it's a pleasure being with you we appreciate your time and we hope that um, when we call on you next you'll be there to uh join us i will thank you so much good to have you all right that's uh, dr odenta odenta speaking i believe from the pdp perspective i will also be joined very shortly by uh the I believe the spokesperson for the APC presidential campaign team who is also uh, be enlightening us on the position of the opposition as regards this postponement. But let's find out other uh, reactions coming in. Of course, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Chief John Odigo Yego, has described the shift in the dates of this election as a setback for democracy. Of course, you recall that the initial reaction after the uh, state, uh, the state of council meeting, or is that what they call them, was that it was a salvation of the Nigerian democracy. But this time around, he's saying that um, the security agencies claim they needed more time to fight insurgency in northeast Nigeria isn't acceptable reason at all for postponing the election. He described the decision as a major setback for the nation's democracy and added that the party is having an emergency session to study its implications and will inform Nigerians of its decision uh, in time. But um, I believe the decision is out because um, Nigeria's main opposition party came up a few hours afterwards, uh, I think about um, less than a day after that pronouncement, saying that it wants its supporters to remain calm and not take laws into their hands as a result of the shift in the election. I must say kudos to Nigerians because some um, institutions were rife that violence will break out if the elections were postponed, but the electorate probably have proven opinion makers wrong in that regard. Uh, but this time around, we also were able to get sounds from the APC presidential candidate Mohamed Buhari, who made this appeal at a news conference after several hours of consultation with party leaders in Abuja. We must remain resolute and rise above all for obligations. We must continue to trust in the entire democratic process and in INEC, which has been brought under so much pressure in the last few days. Our trust can only serve to encourage the electoral body to remain steadfast and remain committed to the rule of law. I wish to state strongly that our party will not tolerate any further interference in the electoral process. The rescheduled elections of 28th March and April 11, 2015 must be sacrosanct. Okay, it sounds like um, Buhari is in. Of course, prior to this time, it was February. You remember that? I got um, a ping. I think it was on the same Saturday. And the guy said, well, it's no longer February. It's March for Buhari. <laughs> Let's find out what Tan has up their sleeves this time again. Of course, um, reactions arrive here. The Lagos State Governor about today, Fashila, also is speaking as we guess this. And he is saying that um, the reason given by INEC is not tangible enough. As a matter of fact, he wants there to be election. He would have preferred elections to hold, uh, uh, in February. And he's also saying that it is important now for APC supporters to also match in the month of March. If the security of personnel, voters, election observers... We don't be ready for election on Saturday, not be so. Let's go to Rukara, Rukara. Let's go to Rukara. 
you will not fit secure. And because of that, the guy say he no be security now in the election. Bring security, make we go do election. They remove security. Not be so. Now, our presidential candidates. You now know, say, don't sign peace accord. Say, no violence. Not be so. Who now want vote for next week Saturday before? On March 28th, who now go vote for? They will taunt you. Don't fight. Make go fight. But make I tell you one thing, no. Peace. No means say make we no campaign. Make nobody come disturb our campaign. Peace no means say if they slap you, make you turn the other cheek. No look for trouble, but defend yourself. Aslan Jerens gets said for the general. Don't look for trouble, but defend yourself. <laughs> Doesn't sound like what the scripture says. That if they slap you, you should turn the other cheek. <laughs> it's all right. Well, it looks like uh, PDP and APC and every other political party now have um, about six weeks in their hand. Now, the economic implication of that is also that um, probably they will have to spend more money. And um, election electionary has to continue of course um, it's also good news for broadcast uh, media like us they will bring more jingles because we have more time to pay their jingles and then i'm also hopeful that um, this time around we would have learned the lessons that um, the uh, electoral process brought to us of course um, the campaign the campaign challenges we experienced before now and that we can make things right on or before march 28th and of course there were also issues of personality attacks uh, prior to the much talked about February 14 election, we are hopeful that there will be more debates this time around, uh, organized by a free, fair, unbiased umpire, and that we'll be able to look more into issues than um, the initial type of campaign we had. We're going to take a short break now. When we come back, we'll find out what the papers are saying. And there's also one more person to go. We will uh, talk to the APC presidential campaign team spokesperson as we guess its contribution to all of this development. Stick around, don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as a savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Glad to have you join us another edition of The Political Arena, the most detailed and incisive political show. You will see us as a politicians, even those who cannot manage their homes, we tell you to let them manage their lives. Look well, shine your eyes. So stomach infrastructure is a way of life. Even if I cannot do anything and I continue to help your stomach so that your life will keep on going. So, my style is without apology. Stomach infrastructure is a way of life for me. I should ask you, what is going right in this country? Is it education? Is it security? Infrastructure? Is it healthcare? What is going right? Absolutely nothing. We mean to win Lagos. PDP is going to win Lagos in 2015. And that means that everybody must be on board. I think has colluded with the presidency, the opposing party to read this election from the data to the end. The successful conduct of free, fair and peaceful elections in Ekiti is a good omen for the subsequent elections to come and the 2015 general elections must be the best. The good, bad, ugly and beautiful sides of the Nigerian political system. Join me every Sunday at 9.15pm on Core TV News. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife and Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election, 
how ironical women being so powerful yet have few grounds in decision making we are talking women in politics a woman will be bold enough to stand up and say i want to become president of nigeria only on core tv news The dailies every day on Core TV News. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Core TV, leave a space, then news. Core TV News. A 24-hour news station. Thank you for joining us again. My guests are already in the studio and you can hear the voices uh, from the background. Uh, but let's quickly find out what the top stories have to say before I bring them in. I have The Guardian, The our Nation, The Guardian, The Vanguard, as well as The Punch newspaper for review this morning let's find out what the guardian has to offer today on the front page of the guardian newspaper jonathan buhari ok election sheet the writers here may 29 hand over date sacrosanct says president and ex head of state insist polls hold on march 28 u.s breath weight others differ over decision uh the front page tells you shows you a part of that story and i believe it also continues on page four of the guardian okay uh the front page picture is doing some sports Cote d'Ivoire, uh sergey Aurea on the right side vice with ghana's andrew ayo during the 2015 african cup of nations final match in the bata after a goalless affair in regulation time and mandatory extra 30 minutes Cote d'Ivoire won the ensuing penalty shootout uh, nine to eight to become new African football champions that happened yesterday. Just in case you got carried away by the election sheet and you didn't find time to intimate yourself with some sporting activities. Uh, let's move away quickly from there to the Nation newspaper. The front page uh, top story here, Jonathan Severs Chiefs on the fire over Paul's shift. And this one... Uh, has an excerpt from some stakeholders. The U.S. here, political interference with the Independent National Electoral Commission is unacceptable and it's critical that the government not use security concerns as a pretext for impeding uh, the democratic process. That's what the U.S. is saying on the front page of the nation this morning. The Secretary General hopes that the elections will meet the high expectations of the Nigerian people. The successful conduct of this polls would enable the country to continue to play a leading role. That's the UN. And if the satanic Boko Haram sect is not defeated by the armed forces of the republics of Chad, Cameroon and Niger in the next six weeks, the security, uh, of course, uh, the security chiefs are likely to ask for another postponement. That's exactly what Falano says. Well, we're joined now on telephone by... Garbra Sheu. Garbra Sheu is the spokesperson for the APC presidential campaign team. Good morning, Garba. Thank you for joining us on Core Digest. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for joining us on Core TV News. Let's quickly have your reaction to the postponement announced by INEC as regards um, the uh, 2015 general elections. Hello. Hello, are you there? I, am, am I live on air? Let me please know. Huh? All right, can you hear me? He wants oh, yeah, to know if he's live on air. Tell him he's live on air. Yes, you are live on, you are live on television, Gabra. Okay, well, let me say that, you know, the, 
the party, our party APC, has spoken. The presidential candidate, Mr. Muhammad Buhari, has both spoken. And they've spoken of this uh, changing bid as a huge, huge setback for democracy in this country. However, you know, you can see clearly that we're not questioning we're not questioning the power or the rightfulness of INEX decision. We clearly understand that it is within the law. Elections must hold in this country uh, in a minimum of there must be at least 30 days to the swearing in. Okay. So they are in the clear as far as the date is concerned. The thing everyone is questioning, and we are equally questioning, is the motive behind the change of date. We know that certainly it has nothing to do with the issues of security. You said motive. What exactly is the motive you are talking about? It, it, is, it is pretty obvious to whoever cares to, to, to understand what is going on. I mean, this thing is about polls. Look, this government has commissioned polls of their own by Americans, by, by the English, by Israelis, and the so domestic polling agencies in this country. Every poll conducted towards the election has indicated that this government, Jonathan's government, would be defeated in the election. In fact, the closest they have ever come to General Buhari is 60-40. So, our sense is that they are holding us down in order that they do a catch up. They want us, they want to, to hold us down, dissipate our momentum so that they raise their own. And the mistaken believe that they can change this. But our sense is that it's too late. They can't change anything. But Gabra, if you think that it's 60 40 in favor of Buhari for February 14, uh, will it change? Will, what do you think can change in by March 28? Uh, please, you have to ask the question again because the line is breaking. Okay, can you hear me now, Garba? Hello, sir. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Hello, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh. Hello, I think I've lost you. I'm right here. Okay, we might have to uh, uh, just do that again and find out um, some other contributions from the uh, spokesperson for the APC presidential campaign team. Let's move away from the nation quickly and find out what the top story is on the, God, uh, on the Vanguard newspaper. Post postponement, criticisms mount. The writers here, INEC, was ambushed by federal government PDP, says Fashela. Conducting polls in the hurry is dangerous, Abagana, and it's a disappointment, says the United States. It's a coup against constitution, Festus Okay. Uh, coup against constitution by security chief says Falano and May 29 handover date sacrosanct says Jonathan details of that on page 8 Ivory Coast wins Afcon 2015 that's on page 64 of the Vanguard newspaper a last point of call is the punch this morning US UK Buhari ACF condemn poll delay details of that you will find on page 2 Gabra Show is back online. Hello. Okay. Hello, sir. Yes. Go okay. Ahead. You said that prior to this time, the opinion polls was 60 40 in favor of your principal, right? Yes. This is the closest they came to us. Okay. You know in, in the case of actually the one commissioned by AIT, it was about 80 20. So we clearly we are headed for a landslide. Okay, what, what do you think would change now? Uh, because um, many are also asking, I spoke with the spokesperson of TAN earlier, who says that six weeks is not only six weeks for the PDP, it is also six weeks for the APC. Uh, do you think that, do you think that this uh, particular poll will change given time? What is the APC really scared of? No, let me tell you. I think a majority of Nigerians have made up their mind. They are sick and tired of the ongoing situation in the country, and they are desperate for change. Nothing, I assure you. In fact, let me tell you, my sense is that this postponement, which a PDP orchestrated, has become fired. It has boomeranged on them because what it has created for them is a reverse day. 
they have further alienated themselves from from most Nigerians. Because the growing sense is that if these guys, if they are left to go on with their tricks, they probably con contemplate a tenure in engagement. And that, that certainly, you know, the importance is simply not acceptable to Nigeria. Mm. So that's where we are. It's all right. The uh, Femi Fani Kayode, I believe, who is also the Director General of the Jonathan Campaign, is saying that your party is not sensitive to the plight of the people. That as at February 6, uh, 2015, about 38% of registered Nigerian voters had not gotten their PVCs. What are your contributions to that? I think it is for Nigerians to assess who is sensitive and who is insensitive to Nigeria. A government that has uh, held the reins of the country and presided over Boko Haram insurgency for five to six years, doing little or nothing, in fact, rather than abating, you know, Boko Haram has been escalated. Uh -huh. So only for them to now say, now we can do this in six weeks. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't, isn't that, isn't that amazing? Something, so if this job is, task is doable in six weeks, why the hell were we, you waiting for five years with 13,000 innocent lives lost? So, please, if you, I know that he's a man of five years, not a funny guy, normally we don't want to answer to him because we're not on the same, I'm sorry, we're not saying we're higher, but, uh, are you being are you being pessimistic that um, six weeks will not be enough for this particular special operation I, in fact left to me it is my wish that Boko Haram be ended today today and if the commitment was there on the part of the Nigerian government it would not have escalated to this I mean this was a strict protest Somebody said at some point that you probably need water hoses to just chase away the two demonstrators and bring it calm to the city. We have allowed it to internationalize. Look, the danger the whole world is in is that Boko Haram has a territory now. They have flags over a territory they call their own. Engaging in that kind of diplomacy, colonizing with international terror, Al Qaeda and all of that, and wreaking havoc. On a regional level, now under the watch of this government, no, they have no excuses to give it to anyone. Okay, what do you think about the turnout? Um, many people saying that um, probably an extension would dampen the spirit of the electorate. Do you buy that idea? No, no, no. Let me tell you, huh? I, the, the experience Nigerians have gone through. This is the greatest lesson that anybody could have learned. Nigerians can't forget the situation in which they are today. The, the yearning for change is coming, not because Nigerians have choices to make in the matter. No, they've been pushed to the world. They are sick and tired. And they don't want the ongoing situation. They want to get out of it. That's, that's what is going on. It's all right. I've been speaking with Gabra Shell, spokesperson, APC presidential campaign team. Thank you very much for joining us today on Core Digest. We're hopeful that um, you also find time to join us subsequently as we analyze the developing stars. All right, it's called I just exclusive to Core TV News. We'll take a short break for uh, some commercials and we'll be back with details. Don't go away. Which person can you carry? Are we now for? Cash Cash you see the look? Ah, plenty, plenty people don't they win 10 million naira every week and 1 million naira every day. To win, just dial star 170 hash for free and correct a hoof with the word you. Where that a TV or generator or phone, you fit win all for free every day. MTN, everywhere you go. You can now watch Core TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website www.coretvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Core TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. On Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production.
You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24 hour news station. Thanks for joining us again on Call Digest Monday. Elections postponement, the matters arising is our discussion uh, today. And I'm joined by two veteran public affairs analysts, Victor Hayes, joining us this morning. Good morning, Victor. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us on Call Digest today. Bola Obai is here again. Good morning, Bola. How do we greet ourselves on this postponement you. now? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity once again. And uh, <laughs> I don't suppose Victor has retired yet. I'm uh, not retired yet. Okay. I don't so, know what to do. <laughs> better right now. I don't know what to okay. do. Vintage public access analyst. I accept you want to condemn us to the, <laughs> to the employment room. And it's all right. That <laughs> <really big time. laughs> the phone has been buzzing since, but um, there's an alternative. You can follow us on Twitter at Call Digest Live. You can where you can put your questions and your comments, especially as regards the postponement of the February uh, 2015 general elections. Let me start with you, Victor. The reason here, they say it's clear that INEC is of the opinion that the security agencies cannot guarantee the safety and the protection of lives, especially their own ad hoc staff. I overheard the professor says that even if he decides to go ahead, his ad hoc staff might not turn out for the exercise because the security agencies cannot at this time guarantee their safety. That indeed is the reason why INEC is postponing the election. But well, reactions are arrive in other quarters that this whole process kick-started with um, comments accredited to the National Security Advisor who talked about a six, who suggested a six weeks postponement as a result of um, not disenfranchising millions of Nigeria. Put all of this together. What are your thoughts on this new development? Well, um, the two are not unconnected. I mean, the, the, the speech about disenfranchising, because um, quite frankly, um, if you didn't have your voter's card before now, and you desperately wanted to vote, there's no guarantee you cannot be violent on a day like that. I mean, apart from the general Boko Haram um, uh, problem of, of security or insecurity. You know, um, I've had arguments like, okay, um, even if you don't have to have everybody have it, because on that day not everyone is going to vote. Mm. It's okay if everyone has the card, but not everyone goes to vote. But what is not okay is to have people want to vote and disenfranchise them. So that is a valid point. And there are people who, who really, you know, um, can, can get very violent for reasons like that. But more importantly, I think is the fact that um, the reason we have a national security advisor is to study the situation and advise accordingly. Yeah. And if you notice, in recent times, let me put it this way, our arms have arrived. Before now, the problem was that we didn't have enough arms, you know, to prosecute the war as a result of what has happened over the years where the Nigerian army's um, stockpile of arms has been, has depleted okay. appreciably and gone into obsolescence, if you like. And so in recent times, they've been able to acquire arms in spite of all the obstacles on the way. And you would have seen, a, a, you know, an upsurge in the fight against Boko Haram, and the Nigerian army is gaining more grounds. And that momentum has to be sustained. They need time to do that, you know, and you cannot be fighting, you can't, this war cannot be prosecuted over the head of the electorate or innocent people. I certainly would not go, if I were NYC or my son or daughter were to be posted there, I would not allow it because the atmosphere there is not conducive. So I think it's, um, I think it's reasonable. The most important thing, and like Gabriel uh, rightly pointed out, is that constitutionally, we must, uh, what is done has, the issue of motive can be interpreted, it can be subjective. Depending on who you speak to, anybody can adduce that anything. But what is more important to me is the fact that one, Elections must hold or must be completed at least 30 days before swearing. I remember in. calling you over the weekend to yeah. prepare to invite you for our election 
program, yes. uh, inviting you as an analyst. And one of the things you said was that he does not want to come on TV and talk about elections, that you yourself want to go out. As I was emphatic about February that. 14. Yes, there I said were, if mm -hmm. it's going to fall within the time of voting, that you will not, not be able come, to honor I not, that interview. I will not honor that. I was getting somewhere. Yes. Yes. There are all that many concerned Nigerians who share the same optimism, yes. who share the same patriotism, yes. who wanted to go out to vote. Yes. I, I, how do you think they will feel right now that there's a six weeks extension? Maybe Bola Oba should answer that uh, before I come back to you. Okay. How would they feel now? How exactly would they feel? Because many are talking about um, a dampening no, of is, the it electorate is, it spirit. It's obvious that for many, many reasons, and for those who are as far away from politics as one can imagine, Imagine schools have scheduled uh, closing dates. Yeah. Imagine, that as I speak to you, I have about two friends who have flown abroad, wanting to avoid all of these things. <laughs> I have, you know, uh, a, a, no, a, a friend of mine, a foreign friend of mine, an expatriate, mm. deliberately refused to come to Nigeria. Mm. I have the chairman of a company where I'm a director, Turkish British, who has refused to come to Nigeria. They said, Bola. Let's get the election done with elections done with, and we hit the ground running again. In the construction industry, we will we, we'll be employing people. No, apart from that, you have people who have planned marriages. That's right. Because this, uh, you, you said that. Right. That was a wedding I was supposed to compare and on March twenty eighth. <laughs> you said that. You said that's right. Because you just did your own uh, uh, don't go engagement. Don't go there. Don't go there. Okay, it's all you right. just did your own engagement. Yeah. But you see, jokes apart, mm. people in the last one year that this the election dates have been announced, they've planned uh, major events such as marriages, uh, burial ceremonies, and this thing. They planned those people. Will they be happy? No, naturally no. Uh, as a Nigerian too, uh, and as an entrepreneur. You see, this is what gets me, and I, I and I overbox. People tend to want to believe that I overbox the the uh, you know entrepreneurial corner. As an entrepreneur, I want to be able to plan my productive diary, and know that you know what, uh, if I eat the ground running from say, from say February 29, you know. Buying this, buying this, this will be my productive this thing for the year. Mm. So for me, that is well. And I know uh, uh, Mr. High, my good friend, is also a professional. Mm. So he cannot, like he said earlier on, when you call him, wanting to join him or employ him to join your election analysis uh, team, he told you that as, in, um, as a patriotic Nigerian, he would rather prefer to do his civic duty after all, we're not living in Australia where it is mandatory that you must, in other liberal democracies like in Nigeria, United States of America, you can decide to go out and vote or decide not to go out and vote. But he said he wanted to do it. And you see, that also has been destructive. Will you call it a coincidence, Victor High, that um, February 14 happens to be the date that the security forces in conjunction with Chad, the Republic and all that, have chosen to kickstart a four or six weeks operation in the fight against insurgency. I mean, February 14, since last year, has been designated as the presidential election date in this country. Um, before the postponement, I mean, there was a, a news by AP, uh, on the AP website, Associated Press, that said that um, the decision actually, um, beyond what we know here, that even AU or the AU forces recommended, you know, uh, that um, this thing should be postponed and all that. And if they decide that that is the day they want to do it, obviously it's not just Nigeria's decision. It means it's a, it's a joint uh, inter international. Uh, a military force that has decided to do it. Um, elections are important, but the lives of people are also important. Um, I've heard arguments like, okay, they had four years to fight this, and 
they didn't do it? Is it now that they're going to do it? But there's always a time to do something. Yeah, like they say, whenever you wake up, that is your morning. Okay? Uh, it may have been coincidental. It may not have been. I do not know. But there are many factors that are put in place when decisions to... like that are taken. Just let me attend to some of the very important points yeah. that uh, uh, Mike just... Uh, is Victor. Uh, Victor, sorry. Uh, Victor just uh, touched on. As a Nigerian, as a literate, educated Nigerian, I'm always appalled, very, 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 very angry when important news about this country, important items of news about this country get to be thrown as well, get to be thrown at us from outside these shores. More so when we know that some Nigerians who have vested interest may have been may may have been using global global media machinery mm. to articulate their own selfish interest. Let me give you a typical example. On INEC held their meeting, the meeting of its executives. INEC held that meeting till about 10 p.m. on Saturday, and from about from and from about 9 a.m. AP had already broke the news. Broke the news. Somebody called me from England, from our diaspora, <laughs> at about 11 o'clock. That Sky News was actually was actually broadcasting that Nigeria election dates have been changed. At about when I followed it up, I discovered that Telegraph, you know, a major newspaper in England, had published it. At about 12 o'clock when I checked this day's, this day's portal, this day, you know, not wanting to be beaten to it, and all, you know, this day also had published it on its, uh, on its website. And it was not until after 11, 11 p.m. Night that, this... that the, the mm. prima facie officer of state who, ha who has the responsibility to make the official announcement came. So, look, things like that, coincidences like that, events like that, they are not only disturbing, but they tell us that some people who have the way with them, you know, who have the wherewithal to to bounce some officers of state to do what they want to do. They will use any resource at their disposal, local or, or global. And it's, it's very displeasing. Who should take responsibility for this at this time? Because I, I also witnessed what he was talking about. If a journalist friend of mine was talking to me from Edo State and he was saying the lectures have been postponed that was in the afternoon and i asked them oh okay, where did you confirm that from here we could not break the news we're just saying that um, well insinuations are right that election will be postponed even the morning international media is breaking the news that was confirmed just a few minutes to midnight in nigeria uh, are, are we looking at um, some people must have challenged those some and, compro and the consistency yeah. between the content of what well, uh, what were unofficially, you know, broadcast or announced or published by all these other uh, global media platforms, and the eventual speech of the bona fide officer of state, you know, they slap you in the face. They just make you know, you just feel sometimes. Why did I go to school in this country? <laughs> just a minute. Let's take another commercial break, <laughs> and I'll be back. Uh, we'll be back with you on the show. Stick around. Don't go away. The gubernatorial election is here again. The Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, NIPR, Lagos State Chapter presents Lagos Decides 2015. This is a platform designed to give equal opportunity to all the candidates vying for the post of governor in Lagos State. All candidates are hereby invited to present their respective manifestos to its select audience comprising of PR practitioners, media, and other prominent professionals Lagos Decides 2015 comes up on Wednesday, 11 February 2015, time 11 a.m. Venue, LCCI Event Center, CBD, Alausa Ikeja. Admission is strictly by invitation. For sponsorship details and advert placement, call Joe on 0802-3924-913 or Jola 
on 0802-366-3429. Proudly supported by MITV, Star FM, 101.5, Galazi Television, Core TV, Cool TV, Wazobia TV, Nigeria Info, and Frontiers Consulting. The debate will be broadcast and streamed live. NIPR, deepening democratic values. Thanks for joining us again. I still have Victor Hai and Bola Oba with me in the studio. Victor, I was coming to you. Uh, on whose shoulder do we lay this blame uh, of this media breach, if we can put it that way? Well, um, it's not the first time things like this will be happening either in this country or anywhere for that matter. What you find is a situation where um, some people, even within the system, you know, uh, would leak out information. And these things can be done for several reasons. Um, people might decide to leak it out to Amtrist. That's, that's a possible reason. Uh, uh, others may leak it out to create confusion. Um, but the thing is, certainly, some people got wind of the information. And uh, there are situations where it might say, OK, this is what the situation is. But don't go to town yet with it. We just thought you should know. And some media houses will just go to town and be first with the news and all that. Um, it's, it's hard to say where to blame it. It could have been a coincidence. But again, if the six weeks was predicted, it's not difficult to also make such a prediction because the chief... Uh, the security... NSA, the National, yes, security, National security Advisor had suggested a six weeks um, uh, postponement. postponement. So, um, it, it, I mean, that, that, that was in line with it as well. Another important mm. point that I need to build the tale on mm. from Victor's uh, submission. When the Honorable National Security Advisor made that quasi-official announcement on the podium of Chatham House in London, which for me, I think I was on one of your distance was going, and I said, for me, it was insulting. Because he had the whole of Nigeria, as big as this country is, one of the biggest land, land masses, uh, you know, in the whole of Africa. He had the whole of Nigeria, he didn't mention it. He went to London to go and mention it. He predicated his rationale, his rationale was predicated on the legitimate argument that a preponderant majority of Nigerians had not gotten their PVCs. And to be honest with you, uh, although uh, the argument for me stands on good logic, but it was inconsistent with the fact that they allowed the election to go on with, people, with less than 60% of people, you know, uh, that's in their PVCs. Like the election was held. Even in Oshun, it was not up to 70% of you know, people who got their PVCs. And those elections were held. And today we have incumbent governors who are legitimately parading themselves based on the mandate they got from those elections. So when the gentleman bounced that at Chatham House, we were thinking, and one must be fair at this juncture, this is Bola Oba, INEC was messy there. There was nothing going well with the distribution of the PVC. And in so much as one would rather prefer the election dates to be sacrosanct then, no reasonable Nigerian could discountenance the importance of the PVC issue. But when ultimately, when it came back, and Jagar also held his own press conference and reiterated the obstinacy of, you know, INEC wanting to go ahead with the date. Then they use what they normally use to befuddle everybody. The security, the security harm then comes with the punch. I spoke earlier with Kayode Idewu, who is the uh, INEC press secretary, and he was of the opinion that as at February 6 this year, 67.64% of the PVCs Which was more, which was more than what the electorate got. Yeah, the electorate got. 
to carry out their you civic know, uh, this thing. What? Um, as as long as he was concerned, INEC was prepared for this election because he was also optimistic that they could do more within the limited time. But do you think that all of these points and finger back to the presidency are uh, being the major brain behind this extension? From what the NSA said, from the fact that the international media could break the news while INEC was supposedly holding meetings like with bouncing, stakeholders, with resident like, electoral like commissioners. Like bouncing them and, you know, inevitably anyway. And we got the news past 11 at night. The news that had already been established by the international Nine, media. Uh, well, the let moment. me, let me, at this point, I think mm -hmm. I should make some things clear because you see, when we sit down, this is like what happened during the, uh, uh, is it? 2012 January foil price hike, okay. where all the governors agreed, you know, on on the increase, you know, on the you know on, on that increase. They all sat down and agreed, but when the chips were down, they allowed the federal government to take the flicks. They pretended like they didn't know what happened. It is instructive here to if we let the public know that there was a meeting of the National Council of State where all parties were represented. All parties of state, uh, as far as I, I know, to the best of my knowledge, I don't know if Abbasanjo was there, but I think was the only he was the only one that was not there. Was but most of them were there, you know? The governors were there, all parties, APC, PDP, if there's an Af guy anymore, I don't know if there is and all that. They were all present. They sat down, they listened to all sides of the argument, and all of these were brought up. And there was no real argument. And they said, INEC will come up with a, this thing. And they were prepared to stand by whatever INEC says. Now we cannot come and begin to pretend as if this is a decision of PDP. Victor, Victor, no, let me, just let a minute. Let me, let just me give him time to establish yeah. his point. You see, mm. we cannot come and sit down and say this is a decision of the president. When all parties were present there, they had their arguments. Every, we, had, we had the speech that was addressed by, um, I think, uh, Okorocha. Yeah, and, 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 yeah. and Mimiko. And Mimiko. We listened to them, you know. So this is something that they all sat down, reasoned. The security people spoke. INEX spoke. All parties spoke. If there were any objections, any serious objections, that was the time to begin to make it. But we also, it was reasonable. They argued it out, Victor, back and forth, looked Victor, at all sides of the Victor, argument. Victor, we were not privy. You and I were not privy to that, to the minutiae no, of that meeting. No, I'm no, no, they, they, I'm they coming. summed it up and but told us. At, at the press conference that was, that was held after the meeting, it was obvious that there was a gulf as wide as... Lagos to Timbuktu from the opinions of Mimiko and Okorocha. Mimiko said, it does seem, it does seem, because hindsight is 2020, it does seem that Mimiko has been somewhat vindicated because Mimiko said that pieces, quote unquote, pieces of advice were given to INE. I believe we can even get that video clip. Uh, M. So I'll just um, find um, the State of Council meeting Pieces where we had were those given opinions to, shared. Mm. To INE, and that it is INEC's responsibility to then announce its decision. Okay. Okorocha said that the preponderant majority of opinion within Council was that the elections should be held. Now, where we are now, because that's, that's in our past, if you want to follow the Okorocha argument, you will say, you know what, the preponderant majority of opinions within council was in favor of holding the election today to the dates as stated then, but the powerful minority who felt they had the machinery of state to hand knew what they were going to do. And that was why Mimiko, the first of the establishment, said what he said and was vindicated. Let's get to the phone lines quickly this morning. Well, okay. And I'll be back with my panel. Hello, good morning. I'm not on to call, call digest. You're on to call digest. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Calling from Oshogo. Oshogo, what's your name, please? Sheon, calling from Oshogo. Sheon, please go ahead with your contribution. Turn down the volume of your TV set if you can. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Hello, good morning. We can hear you. All right. I want to say that I enjoy what Mr. Bola Ojoba was saying. Honestly, it was true. It was it was direct. We could remember when the country is their their meeting. Two people that he has analyzed the Okuducha and the Mimiko, they came in for the prison. And from the look of things, you will see virtually that it is the minority powerful people, as he has rightly said, that are dictating that indeed the election must be postponed. But from what we had, it was like a unanimous decision that the election was hold. So, I want, I want to say that it's, it's too bad. It's too bad. Like you, you have already said when you started that, you know, people will have plans for this and that. Now shifting the date, a lot of things, a lot of plans. It's all right. Show. You now you'll be losing money on the 20. No. you were supposed to be comparing the guy has rescheduled to 21, so, so the money is still <laughs> 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 But then <laughs> let's begin to look at this. I'm waiting on that day as well. I think, for instance, um, the professor said that even in northeast Nigeria, they had uh, they have recorded an appreciable high Ironically. number of PVC collection. Is it not an irony that? In Yobe, in Adamawa, in Bonu, in Gombe, and all other states, there are more people collecting PVCs. Are and this are the same. This is the same region. The security agencies are giving no, no, reasons but, for but postponing the election. Something else you have to take note mm. of. I mean, is that yes, some regions have had a lot of their PVCs released, but there are many others who are complaining, who are whose percentage of PVC release is so low mm. that they feel they, they are feeling disenfranchised. The North is fine, yes, Northwest, Lagos to a very large extent as well. But this, the same cannot be said about the South South and the Do South. Do you East. think the way the distribution was going, it was not favoring? It didn't seem equitable. It didn't seem. It didn't, it didn't. Well, I, you see, because voters Victor, cut across. Because, because voters Victor, cut across. Because Victor is from the South South, mm. I will voters cut him, across. I will oblige him that point to no, to punch. But let's be very honest with ourselves. Victor knows that even in relatively few jurisdictions like Australia, where it is a mandatory civic duty for you to go and cast your votes on the day of election. You seldom, you seldom, in fact, I was in, I was in Europe for almost 20 years, and I've noticed a trend in all liberal democracies in Europe that from when I got to Europe up until when I left to come back home, the percentage of people who ordinarily, you know, should, could vote or should vote have been falling. But you see, the, the argument of the PVC is said, as logical as it sounds, it is almost a topic in the level to which some elements in the establishment are watching it. And why, 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 why am I saying that it is almost a topic? The level to which they are, they are punching it is that even if you give the PVCs out 100 percent before the day of election, some people will die, some people will move houses, some people will be invalid. Let's be very honest with ourselves. There is no democracy, not even in the historic Grecian democracy, you know, the Athenian democracy, yeah. where everybody. I but think, um, it, no, it's, it's important that everybody point. supposed, have, uh, exactly. supposed to have you the see, opportunity. Th let's, let's not give half information here. Mm -hmm. In these jurisdictions you talked about, they don't bother to use PVC. The fact that you're a citizen and you are documented is enough for you to go and vote. And that means nobody is disenfranchised, ordinary, ab initio. You know that you can, it's your choice to go and vote or not to vote. If there is a very strong issue, of course, a lot of people will want to go and vote. Like in this case where people are talking about change and there are those who are opposed to change. And both sides are very strong about how they feel about it. So you'll find that there's a lot of interest in it. But 
to deprive a man who wants to vote from voting is what I see wrong. But give everybody a level playing ground. If you say, because some people have, those that don't have is okay. Like I told you that the way you invited me, I said, on that day, I want to exercise my one, my one single vote. It's only one vote, too, but I will not compromise it. After that time, if I can come later in the day, but if it will happen during election, I will not be present here. There are many of us who feel that way. Fashola, until yesterday, had not received his voter's card. You understand what I'm saying? How would he feel? On a, in a situation like that, you, exactly. Yeah, I got, but so I got it. No, no. Before I, I got it before. For well, I'm not arguing yeah, with you. Talk. But what if you had not got it? Just a minute, guys. Don't let these guys. Let's uh, of us quickly find out <laughs> what these two governors um, had to say <laughs> okay. after the Council of State meeting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In just exactly a minute. That we are not We are not going. Epsilon, can we have it? <laughs> see them laughing. They are very, very ready to conduct the election. And the security agencies have shown concern about certain local governments where they have security challenges. But INEC has the powers to conduct election, including fixing debt for elections. And so council rules that INEC should then inform the nation as to their preparedness and proceed to conduct election. The Council of State is essentially an advisory body we have to advise Mr. President. Mr. President, in his wisdom, has invited INEC to brief us on state of preparedness based on what INEC briefed us and based on perception of council members and security agencies, INEC was appropriately advised, and you hear from INEC. Maybe we read the writing on the wall wrongly. <laughs> no, no. Because watching this again now, yes. I begin to feel that the tone was already set for a postponement yes, exactly. election. No, the, the ball was in INX court, clearly. No, no, no. no. Brian Victor, you, you, so, you, my only... You see, when I'm seated beside Victor, I get a bit fidgety or jittery. Because Victor has this finesse, this intellectual finesse, with which sometimes he marshals the point to want to just tell the policeman to look the other side and he will be. No, let's be very honest with ourselves. It is obvious from what the two gentlemen that you've just broadcast now said, that one seemed to be comfortable with like knowing what would happen. Yes, the other one seemed to be working on the fact that INEC told council that it was ready. There are two major difference, well, differences in that. If I called you as the host of this program and I asked you, Aburo, are you ready to go on air at exactly 10 o'clock? And you said, you've examined all the paraphernalia you need to broadcast, you are ready for 10 o'clock. You as the professional, you are telling me, Bola, be ready for 10 o'clock. Abi? But if I knew anyway that because your chairman is my friend and I, I don't want you to go on the air at 10 and I'd made a call to your chairman, suddenly by 9.50, by 9.58, you got a call in the studio. Just hold on. We have some address that we just, we've just got in. Or rather, in it. it's money. You understand? So the security rationale had to come belatedly because INEC obdurately held on to his position that it was ready. As a Nigerian, no, and I, Victor knows me for this, as a Nigerian, was INEC ready enough for my liking to the degree that I've seen in some other polities where I've lived and in some other jurisdictions, I'll tell you that INEC too was bragadoing. Like the same motion where we are coming from. That is true. Now, that, uh, am I making a point? Very you know, the INEC too was lying. Was a bold face. That guy was lying. It was a bold face. But you said, but INEC that has the constitutional responsibility to do this job says it was ready. But I think that, don't you think I can totally absorb INEC here? Because the professor says that. You cannot even, totally absorb INEC. Even Absolutely. if he wants to continue with the election, that the ad hoc staff 
might not turn out if the security agencies was are saying that, 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 that was double no, speak. From your own, no, just hold that was on. double speak. What I'm trying to say is that there's no way INEC could have gone ahead with this election if they did not have assurance from the security agencies that they've got their back on this. Okay. Well, um, let me also make something clear to you. Um, there's uh, two processes that they did not even announce to us that they were going to do it. Some people are trying to defend them now, saying that they would have done it anyway. Yeah. The voters uh, register, they did not announce to us a date on which they were going to display it. Ordinarily, they would do it. Voters register, I mean, the register will be displayed on so and so. It's part, of, it's, part, it's part of the electoral law. Exactly. They did not announce. So they were not prepared, to be honest. This was a face saving thing for INEC even if they don't want to accept it. And, of course, Jagan would not say to you, oh, we are not ready. It's an indictment on their part. Yeah. You understand? When, but when from they what had four years to prepare. Exactly. But from, and they had been given all the money they requested yeah, they for. You know? But from what we saw, people would not have been complaining. Yeah. You know, that they hadn't gotten... Obviously, maybe the logistics overwhelmed them, or if you think... There are still some voter PVCs in China. Why should that be so? You get what I'm trying to say? So, Hello? It was a face saving thing. Just a minute. Okay. Hello? Okay. Let's take some few moments yeah, out to sure. take us. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Sorry. Yeah, welcome to Call Digest. What's your name? Uh, this is this is of calling from Oshogbo. From Oshogbo. It's all right. Go ahead with your contribution. Please go ahead with the contribution. We can hear you. Go ahead. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, please, I want to make my contribution. Okay. Please, uh, in respect of the preparedness of the INEC, uh, from what I know, as uh, one of those who have participated as an SDO, part of the uh, ad hoc uh, service of the uh, INEC, okay. and I can confirm to you that INEC is perfectly ready. Mm, all what the analysts are saying, but clearly the Ohio, you have to be very careful. Because the election will come and go in. What becomes of you? You think some people will still continue to believe you? As I speak to you, the training of the PO and SPO, I mean APO, the copper, is still on and it will be ending today. I wonder why people are not, you know, alert enough to know what is happening on ground, certify before you come and hear and come and tell Stop of things. It's unfair. Make your findings why you. Hello, are you there? It's all right. Well, I was hoping you will make known what findings Victor was saying that he went well, out. I said that I'm not talking about it. He, he, said, uh, he said that he was aware that the point, one of the points that Victor accentuated against I, no, I didn't mention the issue of training. I never talked about. You mentioned the issue of ad hoc staff. No, 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 no. Please, uh, please me, get me let, right. Let, no, you, the only you, point I you made ad hoc staff. Was, no, the only point I made, the only point, and I, I hope people can look at the net later on to to look at it. The only point I made was the display that they could have announced it. That was the only point I made. Maybe in your mind you thought I was going to go into that. I corroborated the display that was part of the electoral. Yes, but I didn't go into the other issue of training of staff. The man's remark was actually a lambest for the two of us. It was a lambest for the two of us because he, because of his strategic advantage of being an insider. With Ida. Because from the way, but we didn't bring that point up. From the way, con from we the didn't way bring that point. He knows a bit more than us. Let us quickly uh, uh, take advantage of no, the few no, minutes. No, but we didn't, we just have about, we didn't even bring that point. We just up. have about five more minutes to go. But, but oh, okay. let's also look at yeah, this yeah. idea of uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there were insinuations that if the elections were to be postponed, there will be an outbreak of violence and riots across the country. Would you say that um, probably? Uh, some opinion makers uh, have rubbished the something, quality of thinking of the electorate and Lagos, that they have proven them wrong. Something happened mm. in Lagos the day the election was postponed. The night was the postponement officially, mm. but for the first time since I came back to Nigeria, I had never seen that much military presence on the, on the, you know, on the streets of Lagos. Combined personnel of the armed services literally taking over the road with really? enormous, yeah, enormous amount of this thing, and they were like, uh, 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 this thing. 
my brother, that could be ordinary military justice doing their drill ordinarily, but what a coincidence again. Let me have your opinion on this. I honestly didn't say it sincerely, maybe because of the parts where I live or something like that. Maybe that's why. It may be true, it may not be it true. Can't but it's Kenya, Mumbalaji uh, uh, Bangan to the okay. way, there is, although there's a cantonment there, but the cantonment is big enough because the cantonment is almost like a, a mini city. I can afford to tell you that that, that this thing, the cantonment between the Kenya to Oshodi is as big as uh, the Damaturu. They could I, have done I, anything. I wish we had time. We would have said the but public could call and Beyond tell us that, what I'm trying to drive at what is that was. all like. Yeah. Insinations. Yeah. We didn't witness much of violence after the declaration. I think it's. I think it's it's, healthy. We'll the message. The message. And for once, I want to commend General Buhari for asking his supporters to remain calm, because also they are the part once. of this. Yes. You know. Is that this is something time? I've been expecting all the while, even while the campaigns were on, that we should say nobody should kill anybody, nobody should. Should die because of election. But they signed that. a pact. They held them. They no, that's what, no. It's not just signing a be. pact. We every time they go to campaign, they should keep reemphasizing because truly, the people you want to rule, if they die, it's not worth it. They want to enjoy your rulership. Do you, you foresee know? a voter apathy aftermath of this postponement? <laughs> um, this is the best excitement <laughs> to get people out and get them out in groups. Are I you think, serious? Yes, I think I am one out. who believes that. People will come out and vote. People will come out and come out because, you know, I am not one who will, you know, I am one, not one who will want to use the platform to campaign for uh, any of the terminologies there, but some people are displaced so much that this will even make them go out and do the voting. Do you agree with this opinion? Well, I think because from time, people, there are two camps, mm. pro-change, and pro transformation, both sides are very uh, very and pro strong. Continuity and, uh, yeah, yeah, and pro continuity, exactly. Okay. You know, so both so, sides. Mm. This, there has never been a time when both sides have been as adamant about, you know, insistent upon pushing the agenda. Such uh, as and this. because I know you are pro continuity, I want to say at this juncture <laughs> that some people who were not even sure they were going to be pro change before, but they are going know, to change now. Amazingly, guys, I checked the dictionary and I found out that there was no much difference between transformation and change. Hello, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome to Call Digest. You are our last caller on the show today. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I live from Suleja. I live from Suleja. Go ahead with the contribution. You have one minute. I want to appreciate uh, Mr. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what about with Mr. Victor High? I want to appreciate him too. Yeah, and as well as Mr. Victor. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So we appreciate Nigerians that are not Pakistan. Is there anything wrong with being partisan, Red? Right? Mm. This thing, Mr. Bolova just said, that is exactly what happened in Sulinja the day before this election was shifted. Okay. The way the Sulinja are, you me, I saw over 30 vans, illegal vans, filled up with really good men. Okay, that's a confirmation. I mean, yeah. So, you know, you know, you try to let this in here, let this in here. It's all right. Aliyu, I believe you made your point there. Gentlemen, thank you very much for that confirmation. joining like, us today. I honestly mm. say I didn't see it because of I where I I didn't see it too, so and I And I said if we can hear from no, no, the no, north, you, and that's a confirmation. You, you live in posh, 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 posh area. Victoria Island. <laughs> you, 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 government <laughs> residential area. Or like he... It's but supper. You don't live in Mushin too, so don't, don't, don't come mind on my phone. Don't mind it. I still contact my people. It was in a while. Victor Haya and Bolova, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm hopeful that they will join us again uh, before this week uh, wraps up. A big thank you to our viewership. Don't forget, follow us on Twitter. is an alternative for the phone lines at Call Digest Live. I am Nifemi Oguntoe. See you again tomorrow. TV News, expanding your view.